Gracie and I are at the coal mines today on a glorious winter's morning and where Gracie's patiently sitting there is the middle of a cottage that the coxswain, overseer and a clerk used to reside in here at one point of time. Uh, the building itself is approximately 8.8 .8 by 6.2 metres. Now there's a verbal account of the buildings that appeared in the coal mines around 1837. Um, this building isn't in that description, but it may have just been forgotten about. Um, then again, it might not have been built. What we do know though, is it appears on our beloved 1842 map. So we know it was built by 1842. It's a brick structure. Um, it does have sandstone fireplaces. Um, and sandstone um, around the edges of the foundation, but it's a brick structure and I suggest the bricks came from Port Arthur being that early in the arm um, period of the settlement here. Now let's have a look around the building. On this side here, approximately where this stump is, um, there was a doorway. I'm not 100% sure who lived in which side of the room, so I won't go that far into the detail. Um, come around here to the back corner foundations are all gone but we here we had the remains um, of a fireplace um, huge sandstone blocks um, surrounding it and still in good shape and we come across the back here and the corner here all the foundations have disappeared here well they may well be under some of this brick rubble but it's a complete mess on this corner here and then looking back this way here, we can see a nice long um, length of sandstone over a metre long. And down here, I expect there would have been a window on this side of the cottage. And then down here, approximately where the rope is dividing the room. And further along here, we have large blocks of sandstone which would have um, encased the brick foundations that were on the um, room side of it. Down the back here, get a better picture of the um, sandstone reinforcement as it's quite lower on this corner. And then coming up to here, we see our fireplace at this end of the building. Um, not too much left of it here, um, but there may well be under all that brick rubble. Travelling along the corner here, nothing left on this side in regards to um, sandstone foundations and there's not even a brick line actually so it's been stripped um, almost to nothing on this side here. In the rooms themselves, nothing but brick rubble, a um, couple of large blocks of sandstone um, that would have been over the windows or the doors but that's about all I can see. Now at the back of the building, there were two outbuildings. One, um, I believe I found here, and I've worked out the dimensions from approximately from the 1842 map, and it's probably five meters by four meters. Quite a large outbuilding, um, compared to some of the others on the site. I expect this would have been some type of kitchen um, it appears to me on the 1842 map that there's a chimney down this end where Grace is patiently sitting there now and I've got a raised mound of brick rubble there um, which may be where the chimney was. It goes round here according to the map. I can't see any remains in there. And I've got a few bricks and that down this end where approximately, I think, the um, boundary was, but they may well have been just moved from the main area or come across from the fireplace at the other side of this building. Now, it seems to come across almost on top of the path and these pathways here that exist now, that one goes down to the surgeon's cottage there, and that travels up to the penitentiary there, about 100 metres away. Um, these pathways that are here now um, weren't always where they were originally. Now on this side, there was another outbuilding, which I put approximately in front of me here somewhere. 
I had a good look around here on my hands and knees. I couldn't find anything, a few odd bricks and that. So I've just left all the vegetation out there alone. Um, and then maybe somebody else can find something down here at a later date. The sign coming in here, you can see the sign there. Coxswain's Launch Quarters and Clerk's Quarters, Circular 1842. Um, the only thing they forgot to add to that, to that was that an overseer resided here as well as the coxswain and clerk. And the question we'd like to ask ourselves is um, who may have resided here? We know there was a coxswain, clerk and overseer. Um, around 1839 a J Rice was the um, coxswain that was um, posted down here and he was employed with a salary of 50 pounds a year. Um, he may have resided here. I suspect the building was built around 1839, maybe 1840, um, around that time period. As for the clerk, I can't find a position um, for a clerk around um, 1837, 1838. There was a writer posted down here, and I'm maybe guessing that the writer was a similar occupation as the clerk and his name was Jay Lindsay, and he was picking up 18 pounds a year. Now, keep in mind that the superintendent here was on about 200 pounds a year. As to the overseer that lived here, I suggest it was a Joseph Lacey. Now, Joseph Lacey was a convict um, who was sent over from Port Arthur to the coal mines in 1833. He was an experienced coal miner back in England, and he worked at the coal mines um, from 1833 up until 1842. Um, he was appointed overseer in 1835. Um, early on, the overseers could be convicts or ex-convicts. That changed later on when they could only be free men. But in that early part, um, he was appointed the mining overseer. In 1838, he got a full pardon and he stayed here until 1842. Now his salary worked up to 140 pounds a year. And as I said before, the superintendent got 200. So obviously his skills were um, well appreciated by the government at the time. If you see on this block, there's cut marks, which I believe are chisel marks from where the stonemason used to work. Now that is um, a very common pattern you see at the coal mines. Uh, these sandstone blocks on the fireplace, um, they're not um, really dressed as good as some of the other buildings are. Uh, I'm not too sure if they even had a qualified stonemason down here, or they used a convict who had a little bit of a skill in that area, but they're certainly not dressed like something you see up at the commissioner officer's quarters, or even the penitentiary area. But there's also two blocks down here which have got lines on them which I've never seen before. It's as if they were cut with some type of saw. You can see all the vertical lines um, straight up and down in a very even pattern. And looking at this large block here on the south eastern corner, you can see again quite clearly um, the vertical lines travelling up and down the block and they even protrude over the top there. Um, Again, it's a very um, unusual pattern, and they're the only two blocks I've seen so far at the coal mines with those marks on them like that. Now the cottage is not hard to find. When you come into the main penitentiary area, you come down to the back of the building here, you'll see the path goes three ways. Just ignore that way over there, but where Gracie's laying here now, and it's beside a sign, a small sign that says tramway, just keep walking down that path and you'll come to the coxswains, clerks and overseers quarters and then past that is the surgeon's quarters and at the back of the surgeon's quarters there's the tramway um, lookout and you can continue on down to where the old long jetty was on the point. So there you have it, the coxswain, clerks and overseers quarters at the coal mines.